So good to have you. I know that some of you are here for the graduation, some of you are visiting family. There are many graduations in life, actually. Uh, when a child moves from being at home with mother and mother taking her to school, the mother graduates <laughs> because there's a change in her life. Anytime a change in our life of significance takes place, there is there is a sense in which that is a graduation. It is, it is the having to leave something behind in order to take hold of something different. Now sometimes the graduation is not a something we want. Sometimes it is to a life of greater difficulty. And yet, we as Christians are able to see ourselves and allow ourselves and help ourselves to transition from a life that maybe was comfortable and had all of the things going that we wanted to have going to a life where things are not going like we want them to. And that's why we hold on to our faith with all of our might. But then there is that special sense in which we go to an institution of learning, school, college, university. And after a certain period of time with certain things accomplished, we're able to receive a certificate, a diploma. And it makes us feel good. I still remember how I felt when I graduated from high school. I liked it. I don't know about you and you from high school, but are you liking it? Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. Because what comes next after high school in some ways may be a little more difficult than what comes after college graduation. And we do have a college graduate. So I want to do what I can to not do what everybody else likes to do. And that's give you advice. I want to give you scriptures instead. I want to give you something that is God's advice rather than just mine. Oh, I have some words of advice. If after service or over there as we're eating lunch, if you want some advice, just ask. You may not even have to ask. But, you know, just be around me somewhere and, and you'll probably get some advice. Because... Anybody my age that doesn't have something worth saying has wasted a lot of time. Let's start with God. God wants you to know this as one of the most important things in life. There is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one good, and God, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Here is another basic truth that God wants you and all of us to know. But now faith, hope, love, abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Faith comes with two packages. Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, 
I felt it necessary to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. What is the faith? It's the New Testament, the covenant that Jesus died. But also, Jude 1 and 3, in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13, it says, <coughs> Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. The faith that it's talking about there is the object of our faith. It is that which we are supposed to believe, that which we put our trust in. But there is a second aspect of faith. Faith, our faith, comes from hearing. And hearing by the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. And then, there is hope. And there's two aspects of hope. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 8. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. The first thing about hope is what are we hoping for? Salvation. First Peter 1 verse 13 says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So what is the goal of our hope? The goal of our hope is salvation. The source of the, that, that goal is our hope in Christ Jesus. But there are two aspects to hope. Hebrews 6 and verse 19. And this is talking about the hope within you. Not the, what you're hoping for, but the degree and the strength of hope that is within you. Hebrews 6 and verse 19. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil into heaven itself. Romans 5 verses 3 through 5 say, and not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations. Graduates, you're going to have some. You're going to have some new ones. Not just the old ones you've had. You're going to have some new ones. Knowing that our tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now abides faith, hope, and love. 
I know you're already ahead of me because I'm about to say that love has two aspects. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You have to be a little cautious with this because sometimes people forget what Jesus said earlier to this very same man in John 3 and 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 through 7 says, but God, being rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of His grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You are loved. You are loved beyond your capability to understand the depth of that love. Perhaps like me, you won't understand why you love that much. I don't but I sure do rejoice in it. But there's another aspect of love. Another part. Matthew 22, verse, 20, verse 36 through 39. Teacher. What is the great commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God. Oh yeah, we're talking about your love now. Your love for God. Your ability to reflect the love that he shows to you. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He's talking about that which is within us. His love, the first part. Our love, our part. Second Corinthians 5, verses 14 and 15. The love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. As a Christian, you carry these all the time. You make it your business to grow in these things. The Bible talks about babes in Christ who feed on milk of the Word. Unfortunately, some babes in Christ never grow beyond infancy. But you carry these with you all the time. You never put them down. But I will make an almost guarantee to every one of you, and especially those of you who are graduating, the devil's going to tell you to put them down.
He isn't going to tell you to throw them away yet. But he'll tell you to put them down because you can always have them close enough in case of an emergency. You can always reach over and grab them. And that's the way some people live their life. The trouble is, if I'm, if I'm willing to put them down there because I'm too busy doing other things and I just don't have time to live my faith and I, and I don't have time to dwell upon the hope that I, I should be dwelling on and I sure don't have time to love God like I should. I am so busy. Then the devil is going to say, look, they're a little bit of a distraction to you. Why don't you move them? Why don't you just move them a little further away? That way you can go on about your life. You still know where they are, but they're not a distraction. They're not getting in your way. They're not going to hinder the way you want to live. But remember, in case of emergency, you will probably remember where you put them. Do you see what he's doing? He's getting you to the point that you'll just drop them out of sight. And they won't bother you anymore. Your conscience will be clear because there's nothing there to remind you. Have you figured out this isn't just for the graduates? It's for all of us. We're all graduates of life. And we are moving on. But something could happen in your life. And even if you've forgotten where you, you put them, maybe someone in your life will care enough for you to tell you. May I use you? Would you point to where I put them? For real? This is not an example. I'm asking you to point where I put them. I don't see them. Somebody's doing this? I still don't see them. Okay. <coughs> and the prodigal son. Gets to come home. I realize I'm putting these down for the moment. But I better never put them down on inside of me. Satan's going to be after you as graduates in ways that he hasn't been after you before. Some of you are going to find professors in college business associates in life who will delight not only in challenging your faith but in destroying if at all possible. You will have friends not only in school, <coughs> college, universities but on the job who will claim to be Christians and will make fun of the degree to which you try to practice your devotion to God. Don't ever put them down. The lessengers. 
Now, I have a few words of advice that you don't have to wait for. As a Christian, you get to pray to God as your Father, but if you're not a Christian, He's not your Father. He's your God. He's not your Father yet. As a Christian, Jesus is your brother. If you're not a Christian, He's not your brother. He can be your Savior, and He is your Lord. If you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit is your counselor. If you're not a Christian, the Holy Spirit is seeking to speak to you through the written word. As a Christian, when you lay down your head at night, ask God for forgiveness for the things of the day, and you will not have one sin against you. If you are not a Christian, every sin you've ever committed lies at your feet. Christianity is serious business. God so loves you. I love all of you in that sense that God tells us to love one another. But there's some of you that I know more personally, and, and then there's that second kind of love that enters in. But God has all kinds of love for all of you. We're going to stand and sing the hymn of invitation, and I'm inviting you to remember to never, ever, ever put these down. Let's stand and sing.